Hey, Freedom Fighters, I'm Rob Berger, author of Retire Before Mom and Dad. I'm here to help you achieve financial freedom. In this video, I'm actually hiding from the camera, where instead I'm going to have you look over my shoulder on my laptop here. Well, actually, it's an iMac, but whatever, uh, with a Google Sheet. And we're going to build a, a savings calculator. I get the probably the question I get more than anything else when it comes to finances is folks want to know how much should they save? Or sometimes the question is, can I really become a millionaire or can I achieve financial freedom at a relatively young age? And one of the questions I ask them, I say, well, how much are you saving now? And they'll tell me and I'll say, well, how much will you have if you keep saving that amount in 10 or 20 years? And they have no idea. And the fact of the matter is, it's just not intuitive. The numbers are surprising. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to walk through building a savings calculator. I'm doing it in a Google spreadsheet. You could use Excel and i um, going to walk through it. And we're going to actually add some features to it that can help you evaluate your own savings. And at the end, for those of you that might not want to follow along and actually build this, and trust me, it's very simple, but no worries. If you don't want to, at the end of the video, I'll, sh I'll let you know how you can uh, grab a copy of what I'm going to build here right now. Of course, totally for free. Hey, if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and would love to have you subscribe to the channel. All right, let's get started. So uh, we'll just uh, we'll drop something here in the middle and um, we're just going to start with the basic formula and it's FV for future value. And it has just a couple of things we've got to put in it. The first is um, the interest rate or the rate of return. And so for our purposes, I'm going to just assume 8% or 0.08. And um, well, let's compound this on a monthly basis. So I'm going to divide that by 12 to get a monthly rate of return. And, and now we have to decide, you know, how long are we going to save? Well, for now, let's just put 45 in. And I, I pick that uh, because it's sort of the amount of time we spend in our working years. If you, you know, get out of high school or college, you're, you're, you know, you're somewhere between 18 and 22 and you work until your mid to late 60s, you've worked 45 years. And so we'll use that for now. And um, we're going to multiply that by 12 because, again, we're doing this on a monthly basis. And then how much are we going to invest each month? Well, for now, let's, um, let's just do uh, $150 a month. Now, the next one is present value. That is, how much do we already have saved? And we're going to assume that we're starting from scratch. So we're just going to put a zero in there. And that's our formula. Now, any ideas what that number is going to be when I hit the return key? 791,000. Don't know if that surprised you either good or bad, uh, but that's what it comes out to. Again, we've, we've um, invested 150 bucks a month. That's about, what, $5 a day uh, for 45 years. And we've earned an 8% return. Now, that's all fine and well, but if we want to change things, we got to open this thing up and start fiddling around with this formula. What a pain. So let's make it easier. I'm going to actually uh, start, come over here and we're going to create some cells that we can use to change the data. So we'll say rate of return and let's make this a little, a little bigger. Let's pop this up to oh, 18. Whoops, try that again. There we go. Bold face it maybe. And um, so we're going to put the rate of return here. So what we'll do is we'll open this formula up. We'll take the 8% out. And instead, we'll just reference that cell. If we hit return, of course, there's no percent here. So we'll just put 8%. Whoops, that's 800%. Hang on. That's a nice number. All right, not exactly realistic. Let's try that again. Let's do... 0.08. There we go. Now we can actually turn this into a percent. There it is. That's a little better. And uh, maybe we'll center it. And that doesn't look centered. There we go. And um, we still we see we've still got our 791. All right, that's fine. Now, what about the years? Let's let's have a place to put that. So instead of 45, we'll reference this uh, cell. And let's put in 45. We got our 791 back. So we'll just call this Eh, we'll just call it time period. And let's take this and copy the styling. And here we'll center this. All right. And then the last thing we have is the amount we're going to save each month. So we'll take that out and reference this cell. Put our 150 back in and make this a dollar. 
and we'll just put uh, monthly savings. All right, and copy that, center it here, and there we go. And um, we can uh, maybe make this a little bigger, and well, I don't know, we'll call it the grand total. Why not? And we'll take this, copy it, enlarge this a bit, or here we go. Center this, I don't know, give it a background color. There we are. So there it is. So the idea here now is if we want to make changes uh, to our assumptions, rather than opening up this formula and trying to deal with that, we can just, uh, we can come in here and say, okay, well, what if we saved, uh, or what if we earned 8.5%, it's only a half a percent more, what kind of difference would that make? Well, it turns out a pretty big difference. Now, uh, immediately though, we see a problem, and that is, what was that last number? I don't remember. I got to go back and put this in. Oh, it was 791, and if we go to 8.5, it's 936. Wouldn't it be nice if we could compare uh, a couple of different scenarios? So we can do that. Um, what if we go here and insert a row? We'll do it above. Doesn't mess up our formula. And we'll call this, I don't know, scenario one. I hope I've spelled scenario wrong. Math was always my subject, not spelling, even though I was an English major in college. Whole nother story. Um, let's make this a little bigger. I don't know, 14. There we go. Copy it over here. So we could actually do a scenario uh, one and, and then a scenario two. And um, we can call this grand total one. And then let's copy it over. And we'll call this grand total number two. And we'll copy this formula. And of course, it's zero because we don't have anything in here. Now, when we copied it over, it should have shifted everything over by one column. It did. So here, we'll take this back to our 8%. And now we can compare. So we'll do 8.5. And we'll stick with 45 years and $150. And we can copy the formatting just to make it look pretty. And look, it jumped to 850. Let's try that. Whoops. There, there we go. And here. And uh, we'll change this to 8.5 just to see if this works. And there we've got, uh, we can now compare the numbers just on the difference of uh, 50 basis points. In fact, we could even have another column here we'll call the difference and give it some styling. And we can just go equal sign and And that shows us the difference. So with just a, uh, a half a percent difference in our return, uh, after 45 years, it's 145 grand. And in fact, I may just switch this around a bit. Let's start with this one and subtract that one. All right, so we could play with this now. We could also say, well, what if, um, uh, we, we had 8% return for both of them. The difference is zero. But what if we just saved, I don't know, let's just say for 44 years. It's only one year. How big a difference can it make? Okay, well, it made a pretty pretty big difference, 62 grand just from one year. And um, put this back, and we can do the same thing with the amount we save. What if we save $100? Well, that, that makes a huge difference. 100 versus 150, same rate of return, uh, same time period you're talking over a quarter of a million dollars difference. All right, so far, so good. Let's maybe see if I can move this up here without messing everything up. There we go, I think that's a little better. Now, some of you are saying, well, that's all great, Rob, but I actually have some savings already you know, socked away, so how do we deal with that? Well, we can put a current savings. We'll uh, copy this here. And so what we can do is come in here, and rather than this zero for current savings, We'll reference this cell, and here we'll do the same thing. We'll reference this cell. So we could imagine um, where we've got, let's say, the exact same scenario, uh, and here we have no current savings, so we'll uh, put zero there. And then, well, let's imagine here we've got, oh, I don't know, $1,000. Well, you can see the difference is showing up as a negative number. Um, Ah, 
that's not right. The C5 has to be negative. There, that's better. So yeah, so just if you started with a thousand, everything else was the same. Fast forward 45 years from now, and the difference is $36,000. So with this, uh, you can run a lot of scenarios. For example, um, uh, maybe you've saved $30 a month on your car insurance because you've uh, you've compared uh, insurance rates and you've just found a better deal and so it's an extra 30 bucks and you decide to put that into your uh, 401k each month or an IRA or maybe your emergency fund but however you save it you've increased your savings uh, by uh, 30 bucks so instead of 150 you're now at 180 wow you can see the difference right or um, another example would be you think you can do better you know you're going to assume eight percent but based on your asset allocation and historical returns, uh, let's say you think you can do 9.4, which is sort of the histor historical rate of return of a portfolio of about 80% stocks, 20% bonds. Boom, there's the difference. And you can see when you start to change, change numbers this significantly from 8% to 9.4, the changes here get very, very dramatic. And it's a really important thing to understand. When you're talking about a lifetime of savings, every little small change or seemingly small change makes a big difference. Whether you're talking about a 1% or a little bit more than 1% change in your rate of return or even just $30 a month in savings, something that month to month may not have a dramatic impact on your life, but over a lifetime of saving and investing, well, you can see the difference is huge. So there's one other thing I want to quickly show you with this calculator, and it just gives you an idea of the flexibility with it because you can obviously modify this so that it suits your own needs. But what I want to add is I want to account for investment fees. So let's put in a, a heading for investment fees. This could include fees that you pay to your mutual fund company. Most mutual funds have fees. Uh, but it also could be a fee you pay uh, to an advisor. A lot of folks want help with their investments, and I get that. Uh, but oftentimes, they don't appreciate just how a seemingly small fee uh, would affect uh, uh, their, their, their portfolio over time. So what we'll do, um, let's uh, start with 0% for these. And actually, let me copy this over. And how do we work them into the formula? Well, for the first one, we can simply... Uh, like I've got here, B2 minus B6, right? And then here would be C2 minus this. And uh, I'm going to put this in parentheses if I can. So we get the order of operations correct. I'm pretty sure that's what we need to do. And uh, let's see what I've done. Ah. There we go. And um, of course, they're set to zero. And let's um, let's put these both to 9.4, and we'll zero this out. So um, and we'll change this back to 150. So now they're they're identical, um, no difference in the in the portfolio after 45 years. And again, to almost 1.3 million dollars with an investment of 150 dollars a month, earning a return that's that's historically an average return. Uh, with an 80 20 portfolio and of course as i'm recording this we're in a bear market so 9.4 percent seems like a dream but this is a long-term average and um investment fees let's assume that scenario one let's, let's make it a small fee one one percent is pretty standard in the investment advisory world remember this is a fee only advisor this is someone who's a fiduciary who under the law has to have your best best interests at heart uh, but it turns out that they are, well, kind of expensive. So let's just put that in 1%. That 1% over a lifetime of investing, it only costs you 370 grand. So if that ain't much to you, well, go ahead and pay it. So what are your alternatives? Well, uh, one of them that I like if you want help is Vanguard. Vanguard has an investment advisory service that charges 0.3%. And uh, boy, that something went wrong there. Let's try that again, 0.3%. There we go. Uh, still a big number, but a heck of a lot better than, we'll just show it here, the 1% that took our portfolio down to 905,000. Uh, you know, the other option would be a robo-advisor like Betterment uh, they, that is a lot less expensive than your typical 1% uh, investment advisor. But the real takeaway is, yeah, fees matter. Uh, they have a huge 
impact on a portfolio over the long term. Well, listen, I kind of went through this quickly. I hope you found this helpful. It, like I said, it, it's fairly easy to build inside of uh, uh, either Excel or in this case, Google Sheets. Um, if you would like a copy of this spreadsheet, it's yours. What I will do is leave a link to this spreadsheet exactly as you see it right here in the discussions below. Again, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.